Greetings, Minecrafters! Non-Sanity here, and welcome to another episode of Qantas here on the FTOG server. Today, I thought I'd be doing a little bit of Psy. It's a sort of a technology-themed mod, but it's very magic-y, so it fits in this age. Da, 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 da. So let's get started with Psy. Now, if you've watched the Avant series, I did some there. But uh, if you did not, you might not have seen this mod. Um, what I need to make... So that's going to take a piston and some iron. Some more iron and some side dust. And some iron. So I need a bunch of iron. I don't have any more over here. That's okay, I got a lot over here. Oh, I sent. Do I? Yes. Actually, let me make sure this is important. Go up here. Yes, 1920 by 1080. No HIDPI. This was a problem in the last two videos. I didn't have that menu installed, and so I didn't have. Uh, my ah here it all is didn't have my resolution set correctly which resulted in the letterboxing on the sides and a rather shaky sort of a jumpy frame rate the letterboxing was because the shape was slightly wrong it was the shape of my screen and not the shape of you know youtube that i was recording in and because the HIDPI uh, makes four times as many pixels, it doubles the resolution of the screen. Uh, the windows aren't double the resolution, but the actual pixels are. So the game was the 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 game video recorder was having to work, you know, four times as hard to store the video, and that was causing it to not quite get as many frames as it was supposed to. So it was a bit stuttery. Even with a, a nice, uh, hard, a solid state hard drive. So I've switched it back to just being the regular 1920 by 1080 and everything should be much better now. All right, so let's do this. Need to build this first. Oh, I need the piston. I'm sure I've got some pistons over here. Yep. Another thing that might be a little bit different, because with this new computer, I haven't gotten used to this trackpad. This is this is me using the trackpad right now. And this is me using a mouse, which I also have hooked on. With a mouse, I can move faster. With the trackpad, it's a little smoother, I think. I think this it's... It's more cinematic if I'm using the trackpad. But this is a much larger trackpad on the new MacBook Pro. And it has a big design flaw. Normally, uh, with the last one that I was using, it has a button on the left. And if you, or it didn't have a left and right button. The entire thing was a button. But it knew that if you were touching on the left, you wanted a left click, and if you touched on the right, you were wanting a right click. And it was split right down the middle. But this new one is much larger, and for some strange reason, only the right quarter counts as a right click. Not the right half, the right quarter. So all the way on the right edge is where the right click is. Like that. But if I do it a little bit towards center, it's left clicking and of course anywhere on the left is left clicking so this is all the way to the left this is you know like 25 percent this is just short of 50 percent just over 50 percent just over 25 percent or just just under 75 percent just over 75 percent and then like it's 80 percent almost really before oops before it kicks in with the right click and i just I want it to be half. I gotta figure out some way to 
fix that. I'm sure somebody else has been complaining about that and has maybe, hopefully, got a way to fix it because I want it to be exactly half. Uh, otherwise, it's very hard to play a game where I need to left and right click a lot. So I've been using the mouse, which means it's going to... I turn a little bit faster and it's not quite as cinematic. So I apologize for that. I'm working on it. But at least the frame rate and the letterboxing is been, has been fixed. So, all right. Sorry. We need a CAD assembler. I'm just going to pop that right there. A little closer. This thing's still on collect. I'll just stick it right there. All right. And we need to make a starter CAD assembly which we put into here and we pull out like that. Now it's an actual CAD. Actually it just says CAD assembly. Oh yeah, it, I'm putting it in here. This is the output of all the arrow. This is the casting assistant device. And now if I toss out some of that and shoot no. I thought that's all I needed to do. Well, let's look at the instructions. See. See. Oh, looks like. Oh, I gotta switch away from the tool. All right, here we go. Uh, so place it in the CAD assembler, put the iron CAD assembly into it, construct a very bow bones casting device. From there, drop some redstone dust in the world. Ah, okay, that was it. It was redstone dust. I just make a whole stack of this stuff, so I never have to do it again. What is that? Level up. You got one level point. Unequip your CAD and press C to use it. C. And now it has this new display. The way Psy works is it walks you through all the elements of the mod as you go, teaching you to make spells. Instead of making it, you know, doing some mods uh, like uh, Botania, in order to make your way through Botania, you have to build the Petal Apothecary, and then you build the runic altar, and then you build the agglomeration plate, then you build the Eldovan gateway, and each step along the way add, uh, lets you create new resources to make the next step. And so it adds a progression through construction. Um, I forgot to put this back on. All right. This, with this, this mod, it's all about knowledge and not about resources. So in order to progress, you just have to learn things. And even if you've already done this before, you just have to prove that you've learned. So we've done level one. Or ready to do level one. No, level two. Level one, all right. So welcome to the... Oh. Welcome to the Levering menu. It looks like you've gotten equated with your brand new CAD. This menu serves as your school for the mod. And this is your first install. And to, if this is your first tutorial, don't worry. This is the longest one. It has to teach you the basics. We're not going to read all of this. But it talks about all the various pieces of your device and how you make spells and put them into the device and spell bullets. We're going to make a spell programmer. And it tells you all the various pieces of the spell programmer. Da, 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 da. Well, and it tells you down here what you need to make a spell with. So let's make the spell programmer. And that's this guy, which uses the side dust we just created and some more iron. And yes, we only need one of them. And we're going to put that here. All right. Here's where we're going to build our spells. But first we need to make some better tools. So first we're going to take this and we're going to clear it back to a basic assembly. 
Then we're going to make, let's see now, we're going to want a, a socket. we got to make the basic socket first. Make one of those. Actually, let's shift to the grid here. We're going to want a basic CAD core. We can't make the next tier one. Nope, not yet. And we're going to want a battery. There's that. We're going to need a bullet. Just one for the moment. Some new things here I haven't seen before. Do we need a magazine? I don't remember. No, not yet. I think that's it. Let's take a look in the assembler here. That's going to go in. That, 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 and that. All right, the only other thing is the colorizer. If we want to choose a color, um, I'm going to go with blue. So I need some glass and a lapis. So let's go with blue. Oh, there we go. And one of those. Or do I want white? Let's start with blue. Let's see. It's just an early gun. So we've got all those pieces in there, all the basic parts. We assemble it, and we've got it. All right. So now, first spell. There's only two things we know. The selector caster and the trick debug. So we always need a selector, at least one, and that starts our spell. So we'll pop that in the middle there. From out out of this square is going to flow the execution of our spell. So whatever's next, we'll have to connect to it. As you can see right now, it's got these two red exclamation points. We have a red X. It's because this thing needs input and it's only going to be able to get it from here. So if we click it, we can see it takes a target and a number. And if we hold down shift while hovering over this guy, it says it outputs an entity. So, a target. So we're going to say this guy, take from the left side the target. So now there's a little blue triangle going from the caster to the debug. And it's green and everything's happy. It only it needs a target or a number or both. Uh, if it doesn't have either one, it's not happy. But as long as it has one, it's happy and it's getting the target. So this is going to... This is the person casting the spell, so me and it's going to print out to the chat what the me is. So let's give that a try. So what we do is we take a bullet and we shift right click, or no, just right click. And now we have to put the bullet into the gun. So we toss the gun in here and we can take four bullets. So we put that in, take it out. Now we shoot, bling. Level up. You got one level point. Entity player MP. Non-sanity. Uh, number. I'm in world. That's the dimension I'm in. Overworld. I'm at X302, Y66, Z negative 456. So I have my location and who I am. Just from clicking and getting that data. Every time I shoot that bullet, I'm going to get that information. Not that useful, you might say. No, not really. Though it's nice to know that I have a position. I can get that other ways. So now, level one is done. And it actually pops down here to the bottom, if you need to look at it again. Now we're on level two. So to start level two, we hit the learn. And it gives us a bunch of text. So it's going to tell us about the number and connectors. So instead, I'm going to tell you about numbers and connectors. We have to use one or both of them. I think both of them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a number. Actually, let's put the number up here. And in this spot, we're going to put a connector. 
Actually, I think it's that connector we want. And we're going to pull in from the top. Yes, yes. Pull in from the top. Down here, we're going to pull in a number from above. And we're going to right click this, or left click this number and type 3. Did you get all that? <laughs> Let's delete these and show you that again. So now this one is trying to pull from above and it's got a red exclamation points because there's nothing above it. So up here we right click, say 0, and we type 3. Then we right click here and do the upper. So it's pulling in from above. This one is pulling in from above. That pulls the 3 all the way down to here. So it's going to print out my information, which actually I can turn off, but I'll leave on for now. Pull in my information and three and print them both out. We have a good spell. Now, currently, if I hold down C, you can see I can have four bullets in this gun, and it's currently on this one, which is called debug. So I'm going to move my cursor into that quadrant and let go of the C button. And now that one's selected. But if I uh, crouch and right click, it's now loaded into that bullet, the updated spell. It replaced the old one we had. So now we shoot. Aha! Not only did it print out all the things it printed out before, but it printed out that number three. And that should have leveled us up. So let's switch away from our gun, hit C. Yep. Level two has been moved to the bottom and we're now on level three. Level three has got two new items here. Add motion and entity look. And it tells us all about a bunch of things about complexity and poten potency and cost and projection and bandwidth. Lots of the complicated stuff. Oh, and uh, down here you can change the name. So currently on our, our thing we have debug. With that selected, we crouch, right click. And now when we look, it says lesson, because I, I renamed it and copied it to the same bullet. We can have multiple bullets and put different things on different bullets, but we're going to just use one for now. All right, so the next step, uh, if you hold shift over this question mark, it gives you all these shortcuts to do things. Like you can move the entire pattern around if you are near or close to the edge, you need more room. You can shift the whole thing around with the arrow keys while holding down, uh, in my case, Command, because I'm on a Mac. But you can also clear the grid with Command, Shift, Delete. So I'm going to do that. All right. So we now have a new selector. Well, no, we already had, already had select caster. So we're going to start with caster. And we're going to... We're going to add motion. It takes a target. That'll be me. It'll pull from me. Direction and speed. Up here, we're going to say entity look. It needs a direction. That's me. And if you hold on shift, it outputs a vector. So it takes in an entity and outputs a, the direction that they're looking. I want to pass that, so I'm going to grab it. And this guy needs a direction. It's going to pull it from above. And it also needs a speed. So I'm going to put a number down here, and I'm just going to say 3. And I'm going to grab it from below. That is now a valid spell, so I'm going to crouch, right-click, and get it. You notice that pushes me forward. It also used up all of my power. You see there's a chart filling on the right side of the screen. So it goes all the way up, and it goes up to 800 currently. If we come in here and look, it, this spell costs 900. So it's actually going to do damage to me because I'm going over. If we reduce this to 2, whoops, let's do that again, 2, ah, now it only costs 400. So if I shoot, I move forward. 
I still took damage. Oh, it's it's five hundred and seventy one. Yes. Psy cost on casting, power of the spell, complexity, projection, and bandwidth. Hmm. I'm not sure why it seems to be costing more than what it says here. Because I have 800, so I should be okay. Well, we can reduce that to one. Still use it all up. All right, yeah, something's going on. I'm not quite clear on there. But as you can see, it took... What it was doing was taking me as a target over here. It was taking my... my taking me as a target and bringing it up here. Finding which way I was looking. Passing that to this. This took me as the target. The direction I was looking is the direction I wanted to move me. And how far to move me was this number. And it did. When I click it, I get pushed forward. And if I were to look up when I did it, let's wait for my spell power to recover so I don't take quite so much damage. That's not really... No, I, might, I guess my armor is absorbing it. That gave me a bit of a bounce. So that means I can probably jump up on a too high... Where's something too high? Yeah, here. Let's wait for it to fill. Yeah, I use that to jump up. It could be a little bit useful. But now, as I get more levels, uh, the amount of mana I have available, amount of psi energy I have available, will increase. So let's continue going up in levels. Start this next one. This is Trick Explode, Entity Position, Vector Raycast, and Error Suppressor. Now I think only the one that has the red underline is the one you have to use in a spell. Now, uh, the explosion, let's go ahead and clear this. Uh, get out my... I think that's the only selector I have still. Yeah, caster is the only selector I have, so I have to start with that. That's me. If I'm going to do trick explode, I don't want it to explode where I am. Right? We can make a really fast spell and move through this just by exploding right where I am. Well, let's do that just to demonstrate. There are fast ways to get through. Uh, oh, no. There. Oh no, it does need a position. Sorry. So let's move that over there and change this to entity look. Right? It doesn't like that. Because that's a vector and not a position. Yeah, it needs a position, which is a vector, but this is a not a position vector. So, we'll do a vector raycast. Man, I've forgotten everything. <laughs> Alright, delete all this. We're going to do entity position, entity look, entity raycast. So this pull from the left, this pull from above, this one pull there and there, and the effect will be trick explode, and it will be a power of just one for now. All right, what this should do, so starting from me, it gets my position. It gets the direction that I'm looking. So from my position, in the direction I'm looking, it shoots out a beam and it hits something. So like right now I'm looking at the trash can, I'm looking at the table, there I'm looking at the uh, 
summoning pendulum in the over the stuck over there. Whatever I am looking at is going to be the pos the point that gets passed to the explosion. So this is basically wherever I'm looking, that's where the explosion will be. Now, if I'm going to start exploding things, let's go ahead and get something for it to explode. I'll get more than one dirt. Because I really don't want to break my floor or something. What happened to all the dirt I was trying to get? All right, so let's actually get that spell into the gun, which I didn't do. Crouch, click. How you like that? <laughs> Grenade launcher. I have a feeling if I did it on those, it would... And one more time. There we go. So that's sort of a dangerous spell. <laughs> Now it only takes 210, it says, and I'm up to 1,000. Let's do that one more time and see how much it's actually using. It used 300. So what does this say? Okay, that's the number in parentheses. So strange how that other spell was using more than it said. So yeah, this, this pattern of four is extremely useful for making spells that happen far away from you. Remember this this grouping of four. I mean that these two can swap positions. You just have to change the blue and the green. You know, have this one go up and this one go to the left if you swap them. There, it'll do the exact same thing. But this group of four starts with you and outputs something you're looking at. So that's very, very useful. Well, doing that a lot. All right, so we did level up. So switch away from the gun, hit C. Oh, getting a whole bunch of new things here. These are various, various uh, selectors. So we're going to have other selectors other than us. So let's start this one. The thing we need is closest to point. So we're going to have to... Uh, Pick a point, and then it'll find the closest of something to that point. And what it selects from are nearby projectiles, nearby animals, nearby enemies, nearby living, nearby items. And entity motion. It's an operator. A random entity. A focused entity, add to list. Some of these I've not used. I don't know if any of them are new since the last time I used it. Remove from list and list size. So we can make lists of things and then select a random one from that list or the closest one in that list to a given point. Lots of things you can do there. So we've got a given point coming out of here, so we'll keep this. And the one that we need to use, let's see, was closest to point. So we've got a point. Let's add the closest to point. Here it is. And that'll be the position. Now the target is our list of items. So, or uh, animals, enemies. We'll do enemies. Um... Enemies near the given position. Actually, so let's move that over here. Let's move that over here. So the enemy is close to where I'm looking. And in a radius of 2. So pull on the radius. So this wants a target list, and it'll be this list of ent enemies. So we're just going to pull it from there and pull it from below. Now that will output one and only one entity. 
So that'll be its output is one entity. So we can do, say, the motion, add motion. And we're going to do the target is that enemy. Here we're going to add, oh, do we have it, the vector? Oh, add motion needs a direction, and we don't have the vector yet. Hmm. All right, well, we'll just do something simpler. We'll just do a debug, and we'll output our target. So that becomes a valid thing. It'll tell us where we're looking. It will find all the enemies within two meters, two blocks, and it will pick the one closest to where I'm looking and output information on it. So let's load that into the gun. And we'll go up to where we can then get some enemies real quick. Not that they last very long, but... There we go, enemy, sp enemy spider. Now it's saying target is non-existent. There's a creeper. Creeper, but it, if I shoot over there, it's too far away. Zombie. So I'm going to get it to the, there's two, two things down there. It's a baby zombie. All right, skeleton, zombie, skeleton. <laughs> Whichever one was closest. So it's working. It's doing what we had expected to do. But more importantly, just firing at once, whether there was a zombie nearby or anything, is all we need to level up. So, we can now go to the next one. All we have to use is sum. So we're just going to clear this out. We'll get uh, a caster, because we always need a caster. Uh, we're going... Actually, we don't need a caster. We don't need a selector. What we always need is a trick. So I'm just going to get the debug trick. And I'm going to get the add, and we're going to add two constants. So we're going to get number A, number B, and we're going to pull a number from above. Right? Do we need to have a target now? Target any number number. So it does need a target. All right. So we'll use us as the target. It has to have a target. The number is optional. All right, that's a valid spell. Fire it, and we level up. Even though that's zero plus zero, if, if you just want to see what it work, see it working, one plus two. We click it, and oh, we got to load it into the gun. Click it. Now it says three down at the line instead of zero. So it added them together. Straight up. And uh, as for the other things, we have minus, we have multiply, we have divide, we have absolute value, and we have the inverse. So now we've got two that are open to us at the same time. But we're going to just go ahead and do the first one. Ah, here is the vector construct. That was the one that I wanted. So, to do vector construct, let's clear all this. Start with a caster. Going to... Let's make one that just always looks in a certain direction. So we're going to get our entity position. But instead of the entity look that we would normally do there, let's go ahead and use the new vector... Where is it? I don't see it. There's only two pages. Oh, I didn't hit learn yet. Gotta hit learn. Now it should show up. Yep, oh, yep, there it was. So with this one, you just give it uh, some numbers, and I'm going to give it a one and some zeros. We're going to say x is one, and y and z are 0. 
And then over here, we're going to do the vector ray cast. And we're going to do debug target. This is going to pull from there. This one's going to pull from there. Here it's going to the ray is that. Why is that not happy? Should be able to use the zero twice. Oh, well, I guess it can. But it's okay, we don't need the zero. Because if you click the center, then it just doesn't use it. If that center button is there, it's it can, it can be optional. So we've told it one zero zero basically. And we're going to do the raycast, and we're going to output the result. So what is this going to do? It's going to take our position and a direction straight x, and it's going to cast a ray. So out of our head, it's going to cast a ray in the x direction. So let's load this into the gun and shoot it. And it says 307, 67, 456. It doesn't matter which way I'm looking, because we're not using my look direction. It's going to X. Oh, it's this way. 307. That's right over here in this wall. So that that's that crate right there is what it's targeting. No matter where I look, it's always shooting the ray as if I'm facing this direction and hitting that block. Now, if I move over, it'll be hitting that one. So, and if I shoot this way, it's going out the side of my head over here. <laughs> that could be useful in certain circumstances. But it used the vector, and now we can move on. So now we've got two different sixes. We have alternative casting, which is the focal point. Selects the focal point entity of this spell. This is interfaces with a special tool to let you define a region in the world and then when you cast the spell that region is used the first one used so you just really want to only have one of those in your inventory where is the ruler here it is vector ruler easy enough to make let's go ahead and make one i don't think i've really used it before So you shift right click, right click, no. What did it say about it? Shift right click a block to set the source and a normal right click to set the destination. When you use the selector, it gets the vector you selected. In case you have multiple vector rulers on you. Okay, so now if we look at it, okay, yeah, there's the vector. So shift right click there, right click there. That defines a vector. Yes. I moved four blocks in negative four blocks in the z direction. So we use that as the vector. If you just click one place, That's zero. If you do the right click, it's the position. So a shift right click puts a position into the ruler. And then if you do a second right click, it takes the difference between those two positions and that becomes a vector, a direction. All right. So that could be useful in the spells. You just have this in your inventory, and when you cast the spell, it'll use the first ruler it comes across in your inventory and takes that as an input. That could be useful. I have not used that before. But uh, right now, we need to use the focal point. So we need to make another bullet. Let's make... Uh, where's the regular bullets? 
There we go. Spell bullet, projectile, loop cast, circle, grenade, charge. Let's just do the projectile. So we need an arrow. Uh, do I have arrows down here? Yes, I do. So we'll make one projectile bullet. We'll come over here, stick our gun in, and add that as our second bullet. Oh wait, we can't. Or maybe it just it has to have a spell in it. Does it? I don't think so. Oh, it does. Okay, it does. It does have to have a spell in it. Now that spell is not a good spell for that. Uh, so we'll select that bullet and we'll clear this out and make a new one. So we want the focal point and that outputs an entity whatever you shot with the bullet. And let's do a add motion just so we can see it happen. And we, now we can do the the vector create a vector this and we want the y. The other two can be 0 and the y will be just 1 is all, all it's necessary. So we'll grab the direction and the target and now we'll get a speed. We'll pull that and the speed will be 2. Alright. Put that onto our spell bullet. Actually we'll call that, yeah it's called add motion by default. If we hold down C we see there's the add motion. We'll select that and let's go up to our mobs using the slime channel elevator flip them on now this should when we shoot a mob toss it up in the air does not seem to work we gotta wait for the, the side power to come back up I was firing it a little bit too fast let it go all the way up. You see, we've gotten a lot more than we had before. We're up to 1,800. Yeah, I must have done something wrong. Or that's not enough to overcome gravity. Instead of going up, let's go to the side. So we'll change this to an X direction. Oops, X direction. And reload the bullet. Pop like up here. Hmm. Not working. I mean, it got us up in a level because we made a valid spell using the tile piece. But it's not doing what I expected it to do. Let me check for a bug. Add motion. Takes the target entity, the thing I shot with a bullet, just for good measure let's do the debug to output what it is that I shot. And it takes a direction which is a vector of It's up to th not up to three. Yes. Well, actually, that one, that one doesn't matter. Whatever it is doesn't matter. This is the one that matters. That twenty-three is way too much. Three. That's a little bit more than I can do. We'll keep it at two. And Siri Interesting wants, question. Wants to talk to me. <laughs> I must hit a button. All right, so we'll copy that. Try one more time, just to see what might be going on. I'm curious. Wait for a mob. Hmm. I don't know.
does not do what I hoped. But that's fine. I don't really need this spell. I was just doing it to progress the lesson. So, we'll go on. Uh, I'm sure some of you will comment what I did wrong. I'm still curious. One more trust test. Let's output that vector. Does the vector right? Should be. Projectile name. Strange. Why would the debug output the project? Oh, did I not copy it? I probably didn't copy it. Yeah, why was the, the focus outputting... Yeah, that outputs... Okay, so it's it's not... It's the projectile that was getting moved and not the mob. That's the problem. Selects the focal point entity of this spell. Okay, so that's giving us... All right, to make this work, we would have to do the same thing we did before where we're getting the closest entity to that point. Because the actual entity here is the bullet. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and fix this. I want to fix this. We want the entity closest to, based off of a list of entities. And actually, instead of entities, let's do nearby items. So that's our target. Our position, we will use our look at. See, what's our complexity? It's not going to show us. Uh, I'm going to use a connector. And then I'm going to do the good old caster group. Actually, no. This is where we put the focal point. That is the position. And this also gets the position. And a radius. Reuse that too. Position and target. Now, position will be the position of this entity. Okay. Which is the bullet. There we go. So this one is not happy. Because it needs the position too. Duh. So this becomes that. This becomes that. This we get rid of. Here we take it from there. This take it from there. And now we're good. Okay. So our bullet, get the position of the bullet, make that the point, take that position, find all the nearby items. It takes the one that's closest to the center of that bullet, and it's going to add motion to that item in the... I'm going to change this now to the y direction with a constant of 2. So now now if we shoot aha whoop, I got my magnet on <laughs> so wherever we shoot the one that's closest gets shot up, and I'm firing too often and using up all my power. So that's pretty cool. It's getting a list of all the items in a two meter circle. So when I shoot in the middle here, it's getting a list of all of them, but it's picking the closest one and giving that one the motion. Cool. 
as it is, pretty useless, but it might be useful in the future. All right, so we've played around with that one long enough, I think. <laughs> Moving on. Block break sequence. Breaks a sequence of breaks a sequence of blocks defined by a vector. All right, this one's good for mining. Let's clear ourselves out here. Um, I've never done it with the the bullet projectile. I've always done it with the regular. Uh, bullet projectile might be interesting for more long range destruction. Let's try that. So we're going to go with the focal point. So that'll be our bullet object. We're going to take its position like so. So now we have the position of the bullet. Question is, if it hits a block, is its position inside that block or just outside of it? Let's find out. So we're going to do our new, where is the pickaxe? Oh, I didn't probably start the lesson. Now it's available to us. Yes, break sequence. So we need a position, which we'll get from below. Uh, the target which is rather deceptively named, is actually the starting with the block that we hit, target is the last block in the sequence to break. So we'll start with the one we chose at the position, and we'll break a certain number of blocks up until we get to the target. So for that we need a vector. Actually... target is okay so it's a vector so it doesn't need an absolute position of the ending block it just needs the offset from the starting block so this target is really just sort of an offset point so yeah we do need a vector and we will make we're going to do digging of hallways so a vertical strip let's say we want a four tall hallway so we will do up, and we'll put a constant there of 4. And the others can stay 0. And we'll feed that in as our target. And then the maximum of how many blocks to break, we'll go ahead and say 4. And that's a valid spell. So let's load it into... Our projectile spell, which is still selected. Yeah. Blake Brock break. Yeah, we actually put it in this one. It won't work in that one. It will work in this one. So let's go break something here. Let's get some more dirt. Actually, because it can do four, let's make sure this is five tall. Oops. And we'll make some blocks along the sides just to see if it's doing anything else that we are unexpected. All right. So, the two question is, when I shoot this block at the bottom, is it going to break that block and the three above it? Or is it going to, because it hit on the outside of this block, is the block he, here in this space, where I'm standing, the target, and it's going to break the, the four, three blocks above it, including this one. So either four blocks will break, or just that one will break. <laughs> Nothing broke. <laughs> that looks like I can eat. Make sure I had it on that spell, yep. Ah! 
clicking right below it broke up. All right, look, so it looks like we need to make a slight modification to the spell to make this work. Uh, we need to add to this position. So let's move this down here. And we're going to do a vector add. Here it is, vector sum, with another vector, which will have a constant value of, hmm. Now we need to, the look. So we need to move it one direction in whatever direction we're facing, the direction the bullet was moving. I don't know if the bullet has a look vector. It might. You know, instead of using the bullet, I'm going to do the caster. So we'll do our favorite combination here. So it takes that, takes that. This takes the ray and the position. So that is the position, that is the direction we're looking. And this is where it impacted. So again, this will be on the surface of the mining, the wall we're going to mine. We want to go one block into it. So we need to take the entity look vector and we're going to don't know if we need to normalize it. Shouldn't have to. Normalizing means, preferably, this look vector is just as short as it needs to be to give us the direction. So it'll be like, it'll be one block of distance in whatever direction. If it's greater than that for some reason, I don't know why it would be, we can normalize it. So let's assume it's already normalized. I think it is. So what we'll do is we will do the add vector here and we'll take it from this and where we looked. So now that should be the block that we're actually looking at, I hope. So now we're going to do the break in a sequence. That's the position. The target will be a vector 3 high, 3 above, positive y. Oh. So that's the vector, and the max is the value of 4. OK. And that we will put on the regular bullet. No. <laughs> that is not breaking the right thing. Interesting. So I shot here, and it broke there. So if I shoot here, it should break that block. No. Now it's breaking exactly what I'm looking at. It's behaving the way I expect. Depends on the angle. <laughs> you know, I don't think I had... I'll have to patch that hole. That fell down, probably. And I don't think I need this. So now let's do it. Yeah. So 
So it actually is giving me the block that I'm looking at and not the surface of the block I'm looking at. So, all right, forget all I said all that. <laughs> I was starting to, as I was doing, I was thinking, it's easier than all that. Come on, give me one. I got two. Yeah. It's easier than... <laughs> and right now the complexity is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess these count as for only half, perhaps. And this doesn't count for anything. I can move it around and make it a little bit more compact. Let's do that. Let's move our block breaker here. Our vector construction here. Constant there and constant there and get rid of this one and this one. So we're going to say the Y is that. And we want to go up three. That takes the max from above, the target from below, and the position from the right. And the max is four. And there we have the valid. Which I guess didn't really change much. This this reduced. So let's go and do some quick mining using this. Actually, will this work underwater? Yes, it will. Now it's only doing three blocks. So I'd have to increase that vector to be four if I wanted to be four high. But three high is pretty good for mining as well. Let's see how much power it uses. Hmm. Only 142. So I can do a lot of mining before it reaches its minimum. Not bad. I like it. Fly. All right, let me check. Oh, I landed up here. Let me check on the time for this video and see how much more we have time to do. Well, it's actually already an hour's worth here, so we're going to stop. I've been going through the spells slowly to sort of explain how to do things in the mod. Uh, the other option is to just barrel through it really quickly. Let me know in the comments whether you would like the second half of this to be just go ahead and finish, get show the spells necessary to get through all these levels, or should I explain more about what we're doing and how to make useful spells along the way with another long episode, maybe two more long episodes explaining spells as we go. Let me know what you guys want, and I will read your comments. I always do. So until next time... This is Nonsanity signing out. Take care, be good, and see you next time.